Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador. It is so nice to see you. So I must ask, how was your weekend? Kathy and I were just chatting about what we did for Easter, and we both said the table was full of fabulous food, and we had a few birthdays to celebrate. But uh, so we came up with a new product for Brother. <laughs> You're going to love this, Brother. Could you uh, come up with something to through Art Spira where we can work on bread? Homemade bread. Yeah. <laughs> that's our thing so welcome say hi kathy's going to be showing a ton on the serger we'll talk more about bread in a moment but um it is so nice to see you all and welcome to spring kind of kathy how are you i'm good how are you today good so i was just cheering about uh we need to have it through art spira where i can hit the button for bread i made my first loaf of bread last night and win is still alive so i must have done okay i'm not sure it was a little hard so I needed the microwave for that. Not a brother product, but I think we need it in our Spirit app where I can hit a button and know when it's finished. <laughs> That's right. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? So we could sew while our bread is being made. <laughs> I know. It'll be uh, in the My Design Snap app. Everyone's going to be like, what is that? Oh, Angela wanted a bread making <laughs> tool. <laughs> well, I'll I'll keep working on the bread. I, it needs some work. But in the meantime, you're working on one of my favorite machines that we actually did an online class together with. And you've got some really cute projects coming up. Thanks. So one of the things that I'm going to show this morning on the Airflow 3000 is um, how to do kind of quilt as you go placemats. So I've got one started in the works. Let me grab it. I mean, can you see my background? I've got a pillow that I'm going to show. There's a placemat there. There is a napkin with a nice rolled hem. You can do the quilt as you go. This is the start of one. That's and cute. Do how I put the binding on with my serger. All of this is done with my serger. Um, we do have a pillow. I'll grab it real quickly. So do you oh, see it's got the, wait, wait, wait. You've got pink, pink flamingos all over the place. Did you know we were just talking about this? <laughs> are they real or are they fake? I just saw a real one and I thought it was fake. Well, I saw that fabric on the bolt, you know, at the fabric store and I liked the colors. And when I got up to the cutting table, I thought, and she unrolled it, I saw the pink flamingo. So then I knew I had to have it <laughs> cut around the flamingo so I didn't get just half of a head of a flamingo. <laughs> so now you have, it's extra work. It's extra work. And I want to know from the brother fans, have you seen a pink flamingo ever? Because they're pretty cool. I actually really did not think that they were real. I thought it was kind of a... Uh, just a thing on the movies, but uh, I'm shameful to say that I did not know that, and now I know. <laughs> they are real, and when you live in Florida, you get to see them quite often. So, <laughs> so why don't I switch to my camera on my machine, and we'll get started. Sounds good. While she's flipping, yes, we are live today, so leave your comments and questions. We'll take breaks for those. We're working on the Airflow 3000 serger. Do you have that serger, by the way? Because at the end of the show, we're going to show you what the online class looks like. It's free for one year from Brother. All you have to do is register your machine. All right, Kathy, we can see you. Great. Okay. So one of the things that I wanted to point out is the fact that this serger does have um, the air threading, but it also comes with some nice accessory feet. So I've got... This is my roughly your gathering foot. This one we're going to use today. It's my piping foot. And if you'll notice, it has a groove here in the bottom. And this is my blind hem foot. So what I'm going to start out with showing you today is piecing that placemat. So for piecing that placemat, Let's point out my layers. Let's see if we can 
get this up here better. So I'm going to start with my first section. This is my fabric for the front. Then I have a layer of batting. Then I have my backing fabric. So my backing fabric is would be right side down on my table, my layer of batting, my top fabric right side up. Then I'm going to take my other, my next strip of right of top fabric, put it right side down. I'm going to take my backing fabric again, put it on the back, right side down. And then I'm going to take the last piece of batting. So this will actually make two sections or two parts when it's opened up. So all I'm going to do is get that I'm using a four thread overlock. One thing I will mention up here on the top of my machine is a knob and this is my presser foot pressure. And I'm going to make that so that it is not quite as tight because I've got all this thickness in here. And I'm just sticking it up underneath. You'll notice when I have the door open, do you see this red light? That's one of the safety devices that Brother has put into this machine. So I cannot stitch when that safety light is illuminated. My stitch length, I'm setting it about three and a half. I've got my cutting width on 5R. My blade is engaged, meaning it's going to cut. So I am going to cut off just a little bit of fabric as I am stitching. Let me put my little thread trash catcher right back on there. My differential feed is set on one, which is normal. So this is so easy to make um, place mats this way. And then when you open it up, so when I open it up, my back is there, and there's the center. And then I could add another section on the side. I would take this over to my iron and press it under normal circumstances, but today we're going to just wing it. So my next layer is, this is my fabric for the top. Going to lay it right side down. Let me get all this pulled into place. So my top fabric right side down, my backing fabric, right sides together and then my next layer of batting this probably would have been a little more even had i taken it over and pressed but like i said this is live we're just going to wing it and go for it you'll notice that instead of using the presser foot lifter this is a spring-loaded presser foot, and I just have a tendency to just lift it with the, my finger. You can use a presser foot lifter on this right side of your machine, but just a habit I've gotten into. Get it stitching. I'm going to line up my pieces kind of the best that I can. little pink one over there wants to come out. But what I like to do is I like to have all my pieces cut. So then when I sit down at my serger, all I have to do is stitch. Mm -hmm.
So there we go. Nice balanced stitch. See if I can get closer. Nice balanced stitch. I'm opening this up, opening this up. And there's two thirds of my placemat already made. I've been um, making them a little bit bigger than what I wanted so that I could trim them up a little bit, square them up before I got ready to put a binding on them. So why don't I do this? I'm just going to, I'm gonna start binding from this side and I'll go around one corner and show you how I do that. But first, let me change my um, lower looper thread. So here's my little trick. On my lower looper, and I'm just going to stitch it out. I'm going to change that to a fusible thread. So if you've never used fusible thread, it's awesome for this type of application. Because if I sew my binding to the front, then I flip it to the back and I can fuse it. So hopefully you can see I'm locking my um, the threading pipes and I'm turning my hand wheel to hear it click and lock in place. I'm gonna get a clean, fresh cut on that fusible thread because it likes to fray. I'm gonna stick about an inch or so into the threading port. This is kind of wiry. It doesn't really want to go in here very quickly, especially when you're live. I'm going to push this button. What I'm looking for is it to come out of my lower looper right there. And there it is. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there's my. Yep, we can see it. Great. And because of these threading pipes, I can thread my serger in any order. I don't have to start all over again. It's threaded. I just leave the threads right where they lay and I'm ready to go. But one of the things that I really like to do is I like to always take a piece of scrap fabric and test my stitch. And I know we've all talked about that testing stitches in the past. So we're going to test this stitch. If I don't pull my camera down by rolling over the, the wires. And I'm See, just. Kathy, we just need, we need your camera to go a little bit more to the left. We just have kind of you and your right side of your, there you go. Perfect. That's what happened when I rolled over the cord. <laughs> there we go. Okay, there's my stitch. There's my fusible thread on the back. See that white thread? That's fusible. So when I'm doing my binding, and like I said, I'm just going to do one corner just so I can show you how I do that. Bring my needles all the way up. And this time I will lift my presser foot because I want to slide it in from the side. that I'm just going to start stitching, barely trimming off anything. But one of the things that I like to do is I like to make myself a mark about a quarter of an inch. So I'll either mark it with a water soluble pen or something. You have a lot of people saying that they have never used that type of thread, fusible thread before, and everyone's saying, why? What is it for? Well, the magic comes in when you 
flip this over and go to the back, then you can fuse that in place to either take to a straight stitch machine, a regular sewing machine and stitch in the ditch, or you can um, fuse it and then stitch it by hand. Here is, oh. here is the one where I just fused it to the back. You can see I made my binding a little bit too, too wide. So on this one that I'm doing right now, I've made it a little narrower so that whenever I get it turned over to the back, it's like this. Great idea. But I'm going to do my corners, Angela, just like I would if I were doing a traditional quilt. I'm going to fold them back straight up and then straight back down. I might have you just move your left hand just a little bit or hold it up because they can't quite see that from there. Okay. Hold it straight up. Straight back down, even with the, the top. Align it with the corner that you just turned. And we're going to stitch that again. And that's how I... with my serger. Charlene I'm wants to know, did you actually serge off that corner, the first one, or did you go off at an angle or just serge right off? Let's go to the next corner. We'll just, I'll put my presser foot back down. We'll go do the, the corner again. All the way down my straight side, I'm going to stop. I usually make a mark, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I'm going to make a mark. And when I get close, I'll sometimes just take my hand wheel and turn one stitch. I lift my needles are down. I'm turning this at a 45 degree angle. And I'm stitching on. Did you get that, Charlene? I think you got it. That was a really good way to, to see that. So. Okay, so again, you're going to fold this up at a 45 degree angle, bring it down where it's even with the top, and you're going to start your next corner and just continue around until you get back to the where you want to join it. And then that's your choice if you want to join it with um, like a continuous binding, binding or if you want to join it by just tucking one inside the other. So that's any questions on binding before I move on to the next little fun thing. Drop your questions below. I'm watching and it everybody's saying that they love this. Uh, what did you guys think of that fusible thread? Because that's a great idea and how easy to get it through the serger. I think a lot of people think of it as an air thread serger, you can't use specialty threads. So. I don't see any questions popping in yet. I see them in Facebook and YouTube on Brother's page. So if you have a question for Kathy, drop it in and I'll bring it up at the next little break. Back to you, Kathy. All right. So kind of what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of that fusible thread because I don't need it any longer. And I'm putting my serger comb back on. My um, threading pipes are locked. I'm just threading it just like I did with that fusible thread and again no need to thread in a certain order there's my thread it was just that quick unlock my threading pipe now I'm ready to go again but again like I said I always keep a scrap of fabric so that I can test my stitch out And I can look and see that I've got a nice balanced stitch. So I'm ready for the next little fun thing. And we all know that a serger is a straight stitching machine, correct? 
Oh, that's a good question for everyone. Did you know that? Did you know <laughs> it's a straight stitching machine? Never thought of it that way, by the way. But if I want to stitch a curve, and I'm sure you can, can you see in the background here, my little pocket folder holder? See how yep. that's a gentle curve? Well, we can I see the bottom curve. That looks really cute. Oh, I wanted to make kind of like a faux binding for that. So I took one pocket piece and they're not even at the top and I will get them even, but the bottom of it is just a little bit longer. And that's because I want to fold that over and make sort of like a faux binding. Let me put my scrap catcher tray back in so I'm not making a mess of my table. So the trick with sewing a curve is to make the machine think you're stitching straight. And by that, I mean just kind of straighten out your fabric here in the front. And you see that how I'm kind of keeping that straight right here as it's feeding in. And then I'm straightening out some more and I just do a little bit at a time. Straightening out some more. So I get this nice little curve. And you'll notice that I do have pens in here, but do you know how far away I'm keeping them from the edge? And that was because. I don't ever, ever want to run over a pen with my serger because that would be awful for the cutting blade. Kathy, so we now, just, you froze on us just for a sec, so hopefully it comes back here. Am I back? Um, partly, a little blurry, but you're coming back. Uh, okay. Just real quick while you're there, while we're waiting for your camera to come back in, uh, Chris wanted to know, uh, on your last thing. So when you were folding that over to the other side, uh, it was, was it still on the serger? I'm not understanding, Chris, what you mean by that. Maybe make it a little more clear and I'll ask that to her unless Kathy understands that. Okay. So when I'm, when I'm folding it over to the other side, I'm going to take this now to my iron and press that. And then that's going to activate this fusible thread so that the fabric will, the binding fabric will fuse on the back. Perfect. That's probably what she was talking about. Chris, is that, hopefully that answers. If not, leave me another comment and I'll bring that up. And your camera's back in focus. So you're back, Kathy. Okay. New camera. <laughs> it needs some, it needs a cup of coffee. <laughs> probably does. So do you see how by folding that back and leaving that little bit of a reveal, then I get the um, the little like faux binding. Oh yeah, in the pocket. So it's real easy to sew a curve with a serger. You just got to do it in short little spurts, and make sure that you're feeding the fabric in there straight. Any questions on sewing curves? Uh, Chris wants to know on that last thing, did you have to sew it at all? Or do you think it'll hold? I mean, you you're, you mentioned taking it to the sewing machine, but do you think it would hold with that fusible? I don't know. I'm going to wash a placemat an awful lot, so I'm not going to, probably not going to trust it. You know? Um, yeah, I think I would run it to the machine too. Plus, there's so many cool decorative stitches on the Brother machines. I would probably be going to one of those <laughs> just to make it look even double cool. So... My house seems like it has a never ending um, revolving door. <laughs> coming in next week. And so <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to, I was trying to make us matching placemats and napkins. Oh, mm -hmm. I'll send you some bread, Kathy. <laughs> so here's my napkin, nice rolled hem. Oh, that's beautiful. Get up a little bit closer. So um, 
we'll do that last. But I just thought it would be a nice little presentation to put the 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 napkins in these pretty glasses that I only use when we have guests come over. Does anybody else have that kind of kind of drinkware that you only use when you've got special company coming over? I do, I do, but lately it's been a lot of uh, little kids. So oh. no. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do, I'm still in four thread surging mode is I'm going to pop this standard foot off. And you'll notice there's just a little button that I reached around here for. Can you see in the back? I'm trying to get my arm out of the way. And I'm going to pop on this foot that has the groove in it because when I'm covering my own cord and making this piped edge, that cord is going to ride right in the groove of the foot. And I know this question is going to come up, what kind of cord? So I have it all ready for you. Grab your pen and a piece of paper or put this on rewind. Go back and watch it again. But this is 530 seconds cable cord and it's just a cotton cord. I'm sliding it up underneath my foot into the groove. I have about an inch hanging out the back. Lower my presser foot. You can cut your strips, whatever width will fit around your cord. I usually just cut mine two inches because I know that it's going to give me plenty. And we're just going to slide it up to the toe of the foot. And I'm going to start stitching. So once it's the needles have grabbed onto my fabric, I can actually pull some of that excess cord that I have in the back. I can pull it out so that I'm not wasting as much. But one of the things that I find that I like to do, Angela, this helps me by keep keeping the cord running in between my two fingers. If I lay them right down on the bed of the machine in front of the presser foot. And it keeps that cord tucked tighter up into this fold of fabric. Can y'all see how I'm doing this? See, my fingers are right here. And this machine just stitches so fast. But... I'm thinking that that should give us enough to do our little demo with around a corner. So we'll cut that extra off. And it just makes the perfect seam allowance. So when I go to put it around the front of my pillow, so there's my pillow front in miniature. I'm going to leave myself a little bit of a tail again. I'm going to slide this back up underneath my foot and get the groove of the, or the piping under the groove of the foot. And one easy way to tell is there's a little V notch right here in the toe of the foot. And so that's a good indicator for me. So I'm going to just start stitching. 
and I'm trimming off a little bit, but when I get to the corner, Angela, if I take my scissors and put them at a 45 degree angle and clip up to that last needle thread and then pivot, let's see if I can get this. See how I've, I've made it yep. right here and I'm doing a pivot. And I'm just going to sew off. Beautiful. And then that's how I put my piping all the way around the pillow. I just get started again for the next side. And like I said, I am trimming off. Some of those first stitches. We'll do the corner one more time. You're going to put your scissors at a 45 degree angle on the corner. You're going to make a clip into the piping seam allowance. You're going to rotate your fabric off to the left. And you're going to stitch off. So then whenever I turn that, I've got that nice piped edge. Isn't that fast? Fast, easy, and cute. Everybody's like, this is amazing. Well, if they think piping is amazing, let's amaze them even more. Because this is how I usually put a zipper in. I'm going to adjust my presser foot pressure back down a little bit. And I'm going to do a test stitch because I noticed on my last one that it it was a little off. Yeah, well, it's not off now. Maybe it was just me. So this is home deck fabric. It's twice as heavy as your quilting weight cottons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the pillow back now by putting a zipper in between these two pieces. Take your zipper, open it all the way up. Make sure that you're using a nylon zipper. And I want one that is longer than my pillow back. If you need to, you can put a clip in there to hold it in place or sometimes I will take a straight pin and just run it right here and again the zipper teeth are going to ride in that groove under the foot So now that that's started, I'm taking my pen out. Better to be safe. All right, there's one half of my zipper already installed. Isn't that easy? So fast and easy. Everybody's like, oh, the Chris, like, are you serious? This is great. Helen can't wait to see it. Ba bing. It's done. Very cool. I'm gonna put just a little clip in my zipper tape where my fabric ends right there on both sides. Let's see if I can get my arms out of the way. So I've made myself just kind of like a little guideline. I open up my zipper again, put my other piece of fabric down. And like I said, I've made myself a notch, so I'm just going to line that up. I'll put my pen in to just get it started. 
the zipper teeth go into the groove underneath the foot. We'll start stitching. And I just keep the zipper aligned with the fabric. Open my zipper the rest of the way. Stitch off. And then whenever I open it back up, there's my zipper, top and bottom. And sometimes you may want a lapped zipper, meaning that you want to cover up the zipper in the back. And if so, then I just take it to my sewing machine and I straight stitch right across where that extra fold is at. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm watching all the comments. Have any of you tried inserting a zipper before with the serger? Because I'm seeing so many comments, people saying, this is amazing. I have to try it. I'm just curious if anybody has tried this before, because this is brilliant, Kathy. Well, so there's my pillow back. Now I'm going to take my pillow front. And we're going to put the two together. So I'm going to get it clipped right down here out of camera view, but that's the only way I can do it. The reason I want nylon teeth is because I'm going to be cutting off part of this zipper. So I'm going to unzip my zipper partway. I'll hold that together. We're just going to do two sides of a pillow, but I think everybody would get the idea on how it's done. I'm taking off my clip. When I get to the zipper, I'm going to just hold these zipper tails together like this as I stitch over them just because that keeps them from pushing apart from each other. And again, I just flip off the corners or stitch off the corners. Whoops. I had a little vacation there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to tell them what a vacation means. Now, if you're if you're taking our online class, you know what a vacation is. But Kathy, they might not know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, a vacation in surging is where I missed a um, missed a part. <laughs> Get back under there and go back in and stitch over it. Then this is my corner. Again, just. Get that piping. You can feel it under there. Get it in the groove. And you know it should work because you've got the perfect seam allowance that you made when you were creating your piping. And I'm just going to start stitching the two of them together. Like I said, we've just made one pillow corner, but you've seen how easy it is to sew a zipper in. How to put the piping in. Okay, so if I don't turn my pillow right side out, oops, I got some set in there. That was from that vacation that I took. Uh, just one sec, you're froze again. So I think your vacation, your camera went on a vacation for a moment. So let's wait till she comes back. Uh, uh, while we're waiting for her camera to come back, Kathy, Someone wants to know, are you using the three thread or four thread right now? 
I'm using four thread. Okay, there you go, Angie. Okay, your camera's back. So you can hear me, but my camera? Yeah, you're back now, but we can hear you, but the camera sometimes goes a little fuzzy. Okay, so there's my pillow cover with my piping around the edge with my zipper inserted. And look how nice that looks. Wow, that's beautiful. I mean, I could have made this whole pillow in just our short amount of time if there wasn't so many other things I wanted to show you. And see, so you even got the little flamingo head on this side. So last but not least, I want to show you how easy it is to do a rolled hem. And I'm going to um, put my camera, I think we get back to a, oh, it's on the white angle. Never mind. I'm losing it. Rolled <laughs> hem, all I'm going to do is... Open up my machine. I'm going to put it in my threading area. Your machine, your Airflow 3000 comes with this handy dandy little storage compartment for your tools. So I'll put my feet back in there. I'm going to get rid of the piping foot. Put the standard foot back on. And again, they're snap on feet. But I am going to just take out, and sorry for my hands being in the way, because I know they will be. I'm going to take out that left needle. So the only needle that I'm using is my right needle. So do you see how my needle is still attached to the um, thread? That needle thread? I do that, Angela, because I've dropped needles before. And if I leave the needle threaded, it gives me something to grab onto. Oh, that's a good idea. And then because this is a, um, a rolled hem to look nice on both sides. So I've got just a cotton quilting thread in my right needle. I'm going to put a 12 weight cotton decorative thread in my upper looper. Let's get these other threads out of the way here. I can't do that without unlocking it. Let's lock it back. Okay, my 12 weight is in my upper looper, but I have to show this trick. My lower looper is just going to be a coordinating color matched cotton thread as well. So I love this trick. I'm putting my lower looper thread in the threading port. I'm putting my upper looper thread in the threading port. I'm pushing the button and it threaded both my loopers at one time. Oh, I haven't tried that. I was thinking, what is she going to do? I've never tried doing both at the same time. You just saved like five seconds. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't take long to push the button to go through, but you can just leave them, you know? I mean, you can do them all at one time. So that's locked. Now, the only thing I have to do for a rolled hem is change a couple of settings. So on the inside of my machine, I have a lever where I can raise the stitch finger or lower it. So I'm lowering the stitch finger. My stitch length is, or stitch width is on 5R. On the right-hand side of my machine, I have a stitch length knob 
and I've turned that to the R setting, my differential is still on, on one, which is normal for this machine. I'm going to put my thread catcher back on. I like to use nice batik fabrics or linen fabrics whenever I'm making napkins because they're the same on both sides. The batiks um, are really nice because they've got a nice weight to them. But all I have to do with those settings, so my um, upper looper is on five. I'm not using my left needle. My right needle is on four. My upper looper is on five. And my lower looper is on about seven and a half. And that's what I found worked well with this fabric. I know you can't see it, but right here on the bed of the machine, is a groove that's um, built into this little metal plate. That's a guide for where it's going to cut. I love that fabric. It's so pretty. But, I mean, beautiful rolled hem. It takes a while to stitch these because you've got your stitch length set so short. But you're going to set your stitch length dependent upon the thread that you have in that upper or lower looper. I'll get this one side stitch. And there's that beautiful rolled hem that I just took off. Wow, that is beautiful. Pretty. And it looks just as nice from the back. Yeah, I love that. Front and back. A rolled hem, a lot of times I will finish a garment edge, especially if I'm making it out of cotton with a rolled hem. I've got two new baby girls in the family in the month of March. They are less than 24 hours apart. Oh, then we just found out on Easter that we've got another baby girl coming to the family in, I believe, July. So all these baby girls to sew for. And if <laughs> I put ruffles on things, I can finish the edge with a rolled hem. So easy. And girls love, at least my nieces do, Love the flowy skirts, like the tulle, which you did in the surgery class, by the way, um, with that beautiful rolled hem. It's so fast and easy. Oh, yeah, it is. It's just, it's really easy. So I think I will change my camera back because I think I've showed you everything that I had planned to show. We went over quilting as you go. Mm -hmm. We went over, let's see, let me get back. <laughs> we went over a lot is what we did. <laughs> Anybody have any questions that I missed? By the we, way, uh, we typing. We put in a zipper. We showed how to go around a pillow corner with your piping and we've done rolled hems. We've stitched curves, <laughs> but so much more you can do Angela. And I know you've got something special to tell everybody about. Yes, and Chris is asking which serger class. So if you purchase the Airflow Serger, which you get at your brother dealer, just call him up and you can even go test it out. All you have to do is register your machine and brother has given you a full online class. It's good for one year. 
It's like having a weekly, well, you can watch, you can binge watch them all in one day if you want, but it's like having a weekly surging. So I brought this up for, um, for you all to see, because I had a lot of people saying, well, uh, how do I get to this class? Well, you have to buy the serger <laughs> and it's like a great bonus. So let me bring this up, Kathy, because Kathy Stipe and C Kathy Gandy and myself taped this class and here it is. You've got 14 lessons, a ton of great videos. Uh, there, and each one is kind of, would you say, Kathy, kind of like an episode, a full one hour episode of like hanging out with your sewing friends. But we've- it is. So many different things. We did piping, the two thread, uh, showed you tricks and tips for getting things done in 14 projects. There's a lot of projects. So someone asked, well, what is it like inside the class? Well, here's inside the Airflow Surger class. You can just flip through. There's a video that you watch. And then when you're finished, you hit complete and continue, and it just takes you through all of the lessons. So uh, they're a lot of fun. I'm Actually, Kathy, we did that pair of leggings that you could see in the photo right here. I don't know if you guys can see this. These are leggings right here. I just pulled them out of my stash. <laughs> I'm thinking that those are going to be great for fishing. And they were all done on the serger with creative stitching. Everyone loves it. So if you have any issues, you can't get into class or something, let me know. All you have to do is register your machine on Brother. They'll send you a link with a code and you get access for free for a year. And you are welcome. I think it was fun how we showed like the pillowcases where you did one, I did one, and Kathy Gandy did one. They were all a little bit different. Yeah. And we kind of did that for each lesson. So there's different rolled hems. What are you using it for? Of course, mine were a lot of garments. We had garments. We had home deck. We had everything, even the quilting. Uh, a lot of fun stuff in there. So be sure to register your machine on Brother Sews. That's the same for the Stellaire and the Luminaire as well. Very similar, um, but there's a lot of great tutorial tutorials there. So there is a quick question for you, Kathy. Um, okay. Two of them, actually. Someone said, do you have any tips for uh, deciding if you're going to use a three thread or a four thread overlock? It just depends on how much thread I want in the seam. Like I could have mm -hmm. easily used a three thread whenever I was creating that piping because I knew that I was going to be sewing it onto the pillow front and then onto the pillow back. So that might have been a better use for the three thread. So I didn't have as much bulk from thread in the seam. Yeah, that's a good um, one. The only other thing I use it different for, and I can't remember who had asked that, but um, I think it was Kathy. Uh, the another Kathy. <laughs> um, I choose a four thread over a three thread if I need a little bit more um, strength in the seam. For example, leggings or something like that. It just gives you that little extra strength uh, if you're just using a regular serger. And then a question from Caroline, which I was dying laughing because I have the same problem quite often, is uh, her biggest challenge is when you have static on your hands. So, Caroline, remember at the last brother convention, we had a contest who could thread the serger the fastest. And every time I went to put the thread in, it was sticking to my hands at the convention center. So, <laughs> well, all I can say is I licked my fingers, but I'm sure there's something better to do <laughs> than that. I try to put a little lotion on my hands right before I'm getting ready to use my serger because then it's it's the threads don't seem to stick to my fingers as much. There we go. Caroline, you can spit on your hands or use lotion, whichever one you find to be <laughs> a little bit cooler, right? Uh, just kidding. Okay. Patty wants to know, I know you can't say where the fabric is from. It's probably not a brother product, but um, did you find it at a quilt shop? Can you give her a little tip on that? Which fabric? The I think it was the flamingo one she was talking about, right, Patty? The if not, I, mention it. I bought it at a big box store. Okay, there you go. And Helen, is there a guide to tell what to set stitch length to use for different threads? No, not really. That's why I always use that little piece of test fabric so I can play with it a little bit. Um, yeah, I agree. It's just, it's just a matter, and I could tell you my settings for my rolled hem, but then if you go to do a rolled hem on a different type of fabric, your settings may not be the same. 
So I just kind of have a little, I don't know, a, a rough estimate of what I want to put my um, tension settings at. Yeah. And just use that as a guide. For normal four thread overlock, if I set all my tensions at four, then I'm usually good to go regardless of what fabric I'm using. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And I always test because I can have the same fabric. And then for some reason, the next week, I have to make a little adjustment. You just never know. It's, I, Cheryl, I had to bring yours up. I know you had asked like, a lot of questions. I love your username on YouTube, Cheryl Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Cheryl okay. Squirrel, is that what she said? Or is that what yeah, she said? Cheryl, Cheryl Squirrel. I had, right before the show started, I thought someone was in my house. And come to find out it was a squirrel trying to climb my window. <laughs> I wonder if um, we're not close enough. So I don't think it's Shirley. Shirley's been outside eating, but uh, you'll have to name your squirrel. I will. Oh, that's so funny. Everybody say thank you. There's a few more little quick questions. Oh, my gosh, that's so funny. My mom just said, did you cut the trees by your house? Because you got to quit feeding the squirrels. They're going to end up in your house. And now I'm just going to tell her what you just said. <laughs> All right, Angie wants to know, for the rolled edge, would you use a two or three thread or personal preference on what you're using? I typically tend to use a two thread whenever I'm doing like a sheer chiffon or a sheer, you know, lightweight fabric because I don't want as much bulk there and a three thread when I want better coverage. That's just me personally. It's a personal preference. Yeah. Definitely. Hey, Caroline, I was kidding about the spit. Don't spit on your hand. <laughs> but every once in a while, I will just, if I need just a little bit, if I'm trying to get something quickly, but yeah, not literally. <laughs> uh, Bev, the class is for, this surgery class is for if you have the Brother Airflow Surger. Just register it on Brother's site and you'll have access to the class. All right. Let's just make sure I'm not missing anything. You're so welcome. Uh, Patty wants to know the fabric that was same on both sides. Was that a batik? A batik. And probably bought it at the same place, I'm going to guess. I have a nice resource closet here. And I'm trying to clean it out. The home deck was the only thing I didn't have. So that's what I went to purchase. But everything else came from my resource closet. AKA resource stage. closet. <laughs> I like that resource closet. That sounds so much better than a stash. Hey, Bev, you have to have the airflow, um, a brother airflow serger, no other machines for that class. Yep. It was specifically for that serger because we actually show you how to use to set up the machine. Each lesson starts where we show you how to set up the machine for each stitch using the airflow. So you can follow along and then follow along with the project. <laughs> Caroline said she loves that term. Resource closet. That's the word for the day. Oh, wait. Except for the vacation that your thread takes. That's a, that's a very close second. <laughs> Everyone's saying thank you. Thank you. Oh, resource drawers. Oh, yeah. This, this conversation's going down the tubes. <laughs> resource <laughs> closet. <laughs> oh, gosh. Kathy, thank you. Everyone's saying thank you. Thank you. They love every. You always come up with the most fun projects and useful. All of these were useful. Well, I'm going to use my little pocket hanging file thing for all my camera cords so that I can put the ones that I need for our Facebook lives just in one pocket. And I know everything is there. <laughs> you will never lose, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good luck on that. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I have the websites below scrolling. If you go to brotherssews.com, they have two blogs, a sewing and a crafting. And don't forget, you can go back and binge watch these episodes as much as you want. And then if you go to angelawolf.com and click on classes and events, I list all the live shows coming up so you can log in and save it. The best way, though, is to go to Brother's YouTube channel, hit subscribe, and you will never miss a live show. So until next time. Happy sewing, Kathy. I love those napkins. I'll keep working on the bread. If I ever get this perfected, I'll send you a loaf. <laughs> Thank you. With, with major instructions. Put it in the microwave to keep it soft, right? <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a great day, and thank you for watching. Until next time, happy sewing.